Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can both get and also use a OneNote class notebook. Now first off, what is a class notebook? Well, it's a digital notebook for your class at school. And so some of the things that you could do with a OneNote class notebook, well, as a teacher, what you could do is you could create content and you could share it with your students. So maybe you have a syllabus, uh, maybe you have a lesson plan, or maybe you have some notes from uh, some of the different topics that you covered. You can share that out with all of your students. A class notebook also has collaborative space. So this is where your students can come together. They could work on projects together. They can contribute to research uh, for maybe a paper that they're working on. And lastly, within a class notebook, you also have individual student space. This is where a student can keep track of notes. This is where a student can complete assignments. Uh, so all of that happens in the individual space. Now, instead of me kind of walking through and talking about what class notebooks are, why don't we jump on the PC and I'll show you first, uh, I'll show you firsthand uh, how you can both get it and then also use it. So here I am, I'm on my PC now, and the way that we're gonna get a OneNote class notebook is we're gonna get it through Microsoft Teams. Now, if you've never used Microsoft Teams before and you don't have Teams, or maybe you don't know how to use it, I have a video on Microsoft Teams. You could find a link in the description, and that'll give you just a general overview of how you get started in Microsoft Teams. But assuming you already know how to use Teams and you just wanna get into a OneNote class notebook, this video is the right one for that. So now that you're within Teams, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the Teams pivot over here on the left hand side and I don't yet have any Teams set up. You could also think of a team as a class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create team or basically create a class. I have a few different options, but I'm a teacher and I want to set up a class for my students. And so I'm going to click on this first one here. As a side note, you have other types of teams that you could also set up and they all have a few differences, but today we're focused on the class one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, class. And what I need to do now is I need to create a name for the team or the class. And let's just for the, just as a fun example, let's pretend that this is a YouTube video class. So we're gonna learn all about creating YouTube videos. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this just YouTube videos. That's gonna be the name of the class. I could add a description if I want, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on next. So there, what it's doing now is it's creating my team. Teams is gonna ask me a few questions about how I wanna structure this team, who's gonna be in it, so we'll just go through these prompts here. Now, as a first step, Teams wants to know, well, who are the students in this class? So let me go ahead and just add a few students. I don't wanna just be teaching in front of uh, an empty group, and so I'll just throw in a few names here. Uh, we'll see who's in this class. So we also have Isaac Newton. I'm sure he's gonna be a pretty smart student here. And uh, let's also throw in, maybe we have Adele as well. So I'll have three students in this class and I'll go ahead and add them all. So they are now all part of this class. What I can also do, so this is the first pivot on top for students. There's also another pivot for teachers. And if I click on teachers, what this allows me to do is, let's say for example, that I'm co-teaching this class with another teacher, I could add that teacher here. And then they'll also have access to all the teacher capabilities. But in this case, I'm the only teacher, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. I have my three students. It's gonna be a pretty low uh, student to teacher ratio. Uh, this must be a really good school. It's a one to three ratio. So all that looks good. I'm gonna click on close and what it's done now is it's created a team and also just a general channel for my class. One of the things you'll see is, so the team is pretty empty here, and uh, the topic of today's video is how to uh, operate a class notebook. And so what you'll see is within the general uh, channel here, I have all these tabs across the top. So I have posts, files, class notebook, assignments and grades. And what we wanna do is we wanna click into class notebook. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's click on class notebook. And here I haven't set one up yet, but it says give your students a private space for notes and a canvas for collaboration. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's set up a OneNote class notebook. And what it says is I could either set up a blank notebook or an existing notebook. Uh, I don't have an existing one, so we'll just go ahead and create a blank one. Now here, uh, as I'm setting this up, it gives me a little bit of information about what's included in this class notebook. So there's gonna be collaboration space. This is where my students and me can all work together on content. And one thing to note is both the teacher and student can edit content within this space. There's also what's called a content library. And this is gonna be content that I pull together as a teacher. And what I could do is I could edit this content, but my students can only view the content. So this is perfect 
perfect for something like a syllabus or maybe notes from one of my lectures where I want students to look at it, but I don't want them to change it. And then lastly, there's one third area of a class notebook called a student notebook. And this is private space for each student in a class. And so what's gonna happen is I can edit that content, my students can edit their own content, but not other students in the class. So just a quick overview and we'll jump in and I'll show you how these all look. Now, once I click on next, it asks me to set up sections in each student's private space. So what's gonna happen is each student name will show up here. So Emily is an example. And then I have these four sections under Emily. So we have handouts, class notes, homework quizzes. I could go ahead and add additional sections if I want, but these all look good to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create. So now what it's doing is it's getting my OneNote class notebook all ready. All right, well, the class notebook is now finished. And here I have a little white welcome message that tells me a little bit about what I can do with a class notebook. Now, if you're used to using OneNote, this interface will probably look pretty familiar, uh, but it has a few key differences from just a standard OneNote, and I'll walk you through what those are. As a note, one of the things you could do right now, this OneNote is open within Microsoft Teams, but what I can also do is I could simply open it just in its own browser window, or I could also open the OneNote within the OneNote app. So I have those two options from here, depending on how I wanna view the content. I'm fine leaving it in Teams for now. What we're gonna do next is let's click on this little carrot icon over here, and this is gonna open up the navigation panel. So within the navigation panel, what you'll see is I have this welcome sheet that gives me just quick overview of what a OneNote class notebook is. Uh, what I also have is, as I was mentioning before, we have our collaboration space. So if I click into this, this is where both teachers and students can collaborate on content. So here, let's say I add a new page and I'll say Monday lecture. And so now what I could do is I could come in, I could type notes, my students could type notes. So everyone has access to the content within this view. Within this content library, this is where all I can create some content that all my students can view, but none of my students can edit. So this is where I might wanna put, like I said earlier, my syllabus, a calendar, other types of content. This is where I distribute content out to the class for my class to consume. And then what you'll see here is over on the left-hand side, this is my space for each individual student. So here, I could see Adele's individual space, Emily's and Isaac's, and each one has a similar structure where I have class notes, quizzes, homework, and handouts. And so if I click into them all right now, all of them are empty because I haven't created any content yet for my students. That's a quick look at just the way that OneNote class notebooks are organized. Now what I wanna do is I wanna jump into the functionality that's specific to class notebooks that you won't just get in a standard OneNote. And to do that, what I wanna do is up here on the top navigation bar, there's a pivot called class notebook. So let's go ahead and click into that. Now, some of the things that I see here as part of my class notebook, so I have a bunch of different options up here. And what I wanna do is I wanna run through what these different options are and what you can do with them. So now the first thing that I wanna do is before I jump into that, why don't we go ahead and I'll create a page here. And for this page, this is gonna be an assignment that I wanna send out to all my students. And what I'm gonna do is we're simply gonna call it the favorite YouTuber. So it's gonna be a really simple kind of icebreaker for all my students, but it'll be who is your favorite uh, YouTuber and there's only one answer that I expect, and I'm assuming most people will say Kevin Stratford, but we'll just wait and see what my students say. So I'll go ahead and let's put that down. So I've created this page here within Welcome, and now what I can do is I'll click on Distribute Page. And so what I could do with that is I could distribute the page to all of the students in my class, I could also distribute the page to individuals in my class. I could distribute it to groups of people. So maybe I have different, maybe I have three groups in my class and each one or each question is slightly different or each assignment slightly different. So then I could distribute it to those individuals and those groups. And then I could also distribute it to another notebook. So let's say this is a popular class and I have two classes going on. Well, what I could do is I could distribute the page to another notebook. Uh, but in this case, I don't wanna do that. This is gonna be the one notebook I work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on distribute page page. What that's gonna do is it opens up a panel on the right-hand side, and here it's gonna show me all the sections of my students' uh, workbooks. And so what I could do is I could choose, is this something that goes in class notes? Is it something that goes in handouts, homework, or quizzes? Well, what I wanna do is this is a little quiz. It should be an easy quiz. And so what I'll do is I'll click on that section, 
and then I'm gonna click on distribute. And so what that'll do is this page that I just created with this question will be distributed to all of my students. And so it's gonna take a little bit of time because it's creating this page across all my student notebooks. And then once it's finished up, it'll tell me that it's done. And then I can go ahead and I could close this panel. Now that I've distributed the page, what we could do is why don't we check one of the students to see that the quiz shows up in their personal space. So here I'm gonna click into Adele and then I'm gonna scroll down and there's a section called quizzes. Let's click on that. And here you, say, you see that it says favorite YouTuber. Who is your favorite YouTuber? And it shows up within her personal space and I'll click into Emily, click into quizzes. And here too, you could see that the quiz shows up here for her as well. And so what it's done is it's distributed that page to all of my students. Now what I can also do is not only can I distribute pages to individuals, I could also distribute sections. So let's say that I wanna create a new section, I could do that if I wanna create a section group. So a section group basically contains a number of sections. I could do that when I set up my uh, class notebook originally I defined what the sections are but I could also go ahead and create new sections and if I use this distribute new section that'll ensure that the section shows up across all of my students so similar to how I distributed a page I could do the same for sections now what I can also do is let's say for example that you know in this class this is one of the classes that I'm running uh, but maybe I have another class which is exactly the same but uh, let's say in here I've built out a content library with a whole bunch of content and I don't wanna just have to recreate it for my other class which is exactly the same. So what I could do is if I click on this copy to content library, what I could do is I could copy all of the sections of my class notebook and then I can move them to a different, uh, I can move them on to a different notebook that I have. Uh, so this way I could reuse content and I don't have to recreate everything. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've submitted a quiz to all my students. Now what I could do is if I want to check the results of the quiz, what I do is I could go up to this option here called review student work. I'm going to go ahead, let's click on that. And so here what it's going to do is it's going to show me all the different sections of my notebook. And I added the quiz question to quizzes. So I'm going to go ahead and click into quizzes. And now it's going to ask me what page I want to review. And so the quiz was called your favorite YouTuber. And so we'll go ahead and click on that and I'll click on next. And so what I could see now is I could see all of my students here. And what I can do is I can click through each student and that'll jump me to that page within the student's personal space. So here I could see Emily's page, I could see Isaac's page, and I could see Adele's page. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into, let's jump into a student's view. And so here, this is Emily. And so within here, I have a new team for YouTube videos. I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, and here too, let me click into the class notebook. Now this will give you a look at what the student's view looks like. Here I'm gonna expand. And here, one thing you'll notice is here I only see Emily. So I don't see Adele and I don't see Isaac in the class. And so I could click into Emily and then I could go down to quizzes where the quiz was added and here's the favorite YouTuber. And so Emily being a good student that she is, she's gonna go ahead and type my name in. And so now she's typed in my name to the quiz. And then once she's all done, what she could do is she could simply stay on this page or she could just jump to a different page. So now if I go back to the teacher view, what I could do is I could jump through all the different notebooks and here I'll see that Emily submitted an answer and it shows uh, Kevin Stratford. So she inserted that. So maybe what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go to insert and maybe we're gonna go ahead and here insert a sticker and let's look for maybe this and I'll, uh, I'll throw that sticker in. So it's bringing the sticker in and then I could say, uh, great response. So I could throw this little sticker on just to congratulate her for the work that she did. And so I'm gonna go ahead now and let's close the sticker view. Uh, and then once again, I could jump through the different students to see what they've submitted. So it's a very easy way uh, to jump through all of the student submissions. And then I could go ahead and leave my feedback. What's nice too is not only can I type feedback in, but I could also uh, record an audio feedback. So let's say I wanna talk uh, or you know have a little talk track where I give the student my feedback, I could do this. On the desktop app, you also have the ability to ink within the experience. So if you wanna use a pen to write some feedback, you can do that as well. So that's just a quick view at how you could review student submissions. Let's jump back into the class notebook pivot here. And so that was reviewing student work. One of the things that I can also do is there's an option to manage notebooks. Let's click into that. 
Here again, what I could do is I see all my sections. Here's where I can also create a new section. And then one thing I could do is let's say as I'm creating assignments or as I'm creating different materials that I wanna send out to my students, maybe I don't want the students to be able to see it yet. And so what I could do is I could add a teacher only section group. So only me as the teacher will be able to see that. So that will add a new section. I'm gonna take a step back and we could look at what that looks like. So here I'll open up the navigation pane and here I see the teacher only section. So let's jump back into the class notebook pivot. And once again, I'm gonna go back to manage notebooks and I'll show you some of the other functionality here. I mentioned that there's a student collaboration space. One thing you could do with this toggle, you could either unlock it or you could lock it in this case. Uh, so let's say that you have groups collaborating, but now the group collaboration is done. You could go ahead and lock that. And then what you could also do, this is a notebook link that you can share with other people for them to access your notebook. So I'm gonna close this again. And now we're gonna go back into class notebook and take a look at a few other features available here. Uh, there's also a connections pivot. This is where you can connect your class notebook to different learning management systems. And there are a whole bunch of different learning management systems that you could connect to. And there's a list of a whole bunch of different ones uh, right here that you could connect to. The last thing that I wanna show, there are two other pieces of functionality here. You also have professional development. This is where you could access different resources related to class notebooks so you can learn more about how to use them. And lastly, let's say you like something or you don't like something, you can go ahead and submit feedback on the experience using this last button. All right, well, that was just a quick look at how you could use a OneNote class notebook to organize and also manage your class. Class notebooks are a very nice way to distribute content, have students submit content, and also to allow your students to work in group collaborative settings. If this video helped you learn how to use a OneNote class notebook, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if there are any other video topics that you want to see me cover in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Bye.